శ్రీ సచ్చిదానంద సద్గురు సాయినాథ్ మహారాజ్ కి జై సాయి బాబా ది మాస్టర్ బాబాస్ ఓమ్నిసియన్స్ బాబా వన్స్ అషోర్ హిస్ డివోటీస్ వాట్ ఎవర్ యూ డూ వేర్ ఎవర్ యూ మే బీ ఎవర్ బేర్ దిస్ ఇన్ మైండ్ దట్ ఐ ఆమ్ ఆల్వేస్ అవేర్ ఆఫ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ వాట్ ఎ గ్రేట్ సొలేస్ అండ్ సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ కాన్ఫిడెన్స్ టు హిస్ డివోటీస్ అండ్ ఎట్ వాట్ అన్ ఎఫెక్టివ్ చెక్ టు దేర్ ఈవిల్ ప్రొపెన్సిటీస్ ఇన్ డిసెంబర్ నైన్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ వన్ బలరామ్ మాన్కర్ వెన్ టు దర్ తార్కార్డ్స్ and told them that he was going to Shiridi and asked them whether they had any messages for Baba. Mrs. Tharkad wanted to send some gift to Baba. She searched the whole house but found nothing but a milk cake, Peda, which was already offered to Sai Baba's picture in the shrine. Such a thing is generally considered unworthy of being offered a second time, but she hoped that Baba would, more, uh, would care more of her love than the thing sent. Balaram was in the period of mourning consequent on the death of his death, uh, death of his father and such one is con- usually considered impure to take such a holy gift Balaram took the peda with him to Shirdi but in his hurry to see Sai Baba forgot to take it to him he took Baba's darshan with his own feeling with his own offerings Baba waited for Balaram to recollect it when Balaram visited Baba in the afternoon he again forgot to take it Baba said what did you bring for me from Bandra nothing said Balaram Baba repeated his question a little later but got no better reply at last he said did not the mother tharkad give you some sweet meat for me the young man remembered the whole thing and brought the peda baba eagerly received it and ate it at once all the love and devotion of the lady were fully reciprocated by baba there is mw pradhan's experience while starting that is on his visit to shirdi i had provided myself with three or four gold sovereigns kinyas as they were called and some uh, currency notes i note uh, i got a note changed so that i might be able to give silver rupees when baba asked for dakshina i had 20 rupees in cash and the rest in notes baba was standing at the lendi as though waiting for us so we bowed to him I took all the flowers garlands and fruits to Masid and gave him I looked into his face and eyes I felt that Baba was a great saint Baba asked me for dakshina instead of giving him silver coins as I had intended at Kalyan I put a sovereign in his hand Baba turned it in his in the in his palm there and asked Nulkar what is this what is its worth Nulkar replied it is worth of 15 rupees Baba returned the coin to me saying I do not want this keep it and give me 15 rupees I then gave baba 15 silver rupees baba counted them over and over and said here is only 10 rupees give me 55 rupees more I gladly gave him 5 rupees baba was obviously aware that 20 rupees in my pocket was intended for him and got it he did not ask for more though I had a lot with me Cholkar, a poor clerk in the civil court at Thana, once heard of Baba's greatness and vowed to Baba, Baba, I am a poor man and I am unable even to support my family. If by your grace I pass the departmental examination and get a permanent post, I shall go to Shridi for your darshan and distribute sugar candy in your name. Cholkar's wish was soon fulfilled. A poor Cholkar, anxious to fulfill his vow at the earliest, resolved to economize on his personal expenditure. He stopped using sugar in his tea and uh, out of that saved enough money to fulfill his vow. He visited Baba and distributed sugar candy in his name. Then Baba addressed Bapu Sahib Jog, who was seated in the mask and pointing at Cholkar said, Jog, take him to your house and give him a cup of tea, fully saturated with sugar. Cholkar was much moved and wonderstruck by Baba's omniscience. Once a lawyer from Pandarpur humbly prostrated to Baba and offered him Dakshina. Baba glanced at him and remarked, How cunning people are! They fall at the feet and offer Dakshina, but shower abuses behind the back. Is it not this wonderful? Is not this wonderful? Later, when devotees were discussing what Baba might have meant, the lawyer told them the dart was aimed at me. The subject of Pandarpur once stayed at Shirdi to improve his health. I, won, uh, I was one of those who criticized his blind faith in Baba. About the year 1911, Mansomadeva Swami of Haridwar, uh, 
heard of Sai Baba's greatness and started for Shirdi. In his Tonga approach to Shirdi, he saw the flags that stood on Sai Baba's masjid and thought, why should a saint have a fancy for flags unless he was a unless he has a craving for fame? He was so much upset that he then and there thought of returning to Haridwar. However, his fellow travelers impressed upon him that he should better see the saint before making any decision. When finally he saw Sai Baba, he perceived the greatness of the fakir and tears of joy. Streamed down his cheeks. All his doubts melted, melted into thin air. He remembered his guru's watchword, that is our abode and place of rest where the mind is most pleased and charmed. On seeing him, Baba got wild and yelled, Go away, beware, if you come back to Masid. Why take darshan of a sadhu that displays his banners over the Masid? Is this a sign of his sainthood? Get away. So Madhya Swami was very much surprised to note that Baba was voicing his earlier feelings. Later, Baba cooled down and received him well. Rasne of Pune says, I went to Baba thinking that I would allot a share to him in the profits in a business transaction and I was massaging his feet. Baba replied expressly that he did not want to get involved in any samsara like sharing of the profits. So I gave up the idea. He records two more similar experiences. I had two questions in my mind. He gave answers to both. There are so many crowding to Sai Baba. Do they all derive benefit from him? To this he replied vocally, Look at the mango tree in blossom. If all flowers turn into ripe fruits, what a splendid crop it would be. But do they? Most of them fall off either as flowers or as unripe fruits owing to winds, etc. Very few remain. If Baba were, pa- were to pass away, how hopelessly adrift I would be and how am I to fear them? To this Baba answered that, he would be with me whenever I thought of him, wherever I am. That promise he has kept up before 1918 and since too. He is still with me, he is still guiding me. As an instance of this, he mentions, There was a theft in my house. My old friend stole my wife's jewel box, including her auspicious nathi. I wept before Baba's photograph. The next day, the man returned the jewel box and prayed for the pardon. Lakshman Govind Munge of Nasik went to see Baba sometime around 1890, accompanied by Gargil and Nimonkar. When the three were to rest for the night, Gargil set apart some dates, one rupee and a packet of joysticks to be given to Baba the, the, to be given to the Baba the next day. Next morning on seeing Baba, on seeing him, Baba said, Give me my dates, my joysticks and my rupee. Gargil and Munge wondered at Baba's knowledge of their heart's, heart's wish. But Baba at once disposed of the gifts, gave the rupee to the oil monger who supplied oil for the lamps in the masjid. The jaw sticks were lightened and the dates were distributed to all. Srimati Bikubai and a young widow was a close friend of Radha Krishnamai. The latter died in 1916 when Bikubai was at Ahmadnagar. Later on, there, uh, later on her way to Shirdi, Bhikkhu Bai stopped at Kopargaon to take a dip in the sacred river Godavari. She remembered that Radha Krishna Mai was uh, cremated on the banks of the river. Her heart was full of sorrow and she silently blamed Sai Baba for not having saved her. Later, she brought a flower garland, a watermelon and milk cakes paid us as gifts to Baba. On her arrival to Shirdi, Baba said to her, I don't want this garland of mental uneasiness. When she tried to garland him in spite of his protest, the garland mysteriously snapped into three parts, one in each of her hands and third fell on the floor. When she put the milk sweets and the pieces of melon before him, Baba said to Dikshit and others who tried to persuade him who tried to persuade him to accept the same. This woman was weeping and shedding tears at Godavari and she has brought it with a troubled heart and so I will not accept it. In the very early years of Sai Baba's advent at Shirdi, Nana Sahib Nimonkar was once told by his uncle Balvantra, father of Shama of Shirdi, about Baba. People believe he is a mad fakir. I doubt if he is really mad, but you had better go go with the better go with me, see him, and give me your opinion. 
Earlier, whenever Balavant Rao had gone to see him, Sai Baba kept, at, kept him at a distance by threatening to fling a brick bat at him. But when Nana Sahib's uh, Nimonkar went to Balavant Rao, he allowed them to go to quite close to him. Nimonkar's heart was charmed by Baba at the very first sight and he assured his uncle that Sai Baba was a great saint. But Balavant Rao wondered why Baba hurled stones at him earlier and not on this occasion. Nimonkar said to him, That was because you doubted if he was mad, whereas I did not. Somanath Nimonkar, Nana Sahib Nimonkar's son, left Plague Stick and Pune for his native place, Nimon, during the Christmas vacation in 1917. He took his first son Gopal, aged three years with him, and on the way halted at Shirdi. When they later sought his leave to proceed to Nimon, Baba gave Udi to Somnath and said, Go and save the child. Somnath took it for a casual blessing to his son and so gave some Udi to Gopal and started for Nimon. But when he reached home, he realized the true significance of Baba's words. His brother's 12-day baby was in a critical condition and Somnath discovered to his despair that he had lost the Udi that Baba gave him. So taking the child in his lap, he fervently prayed to Baba and in 15 minutes, the child, start recover the child started recovering. One day, Baba was smoking his chilim and passed it around among those near one Mr. Columbe, a smoker of beads, was seated at some distance. He felt a desire to have a puff or two out of the chili. At once, Baba called out to him, You boy, come here. Why keep yourself so far? Come near and have a smoke. Columbia joined the group and enjoyed a few puffs. On a later visit to Shirdi, Baba asked Dakshina from everyone except Columbia. Columbia was happy when he thought that Baba was there by revealing to him that he had taken note of his having given up his vicious habit of drinking. And later, when everyone had retired to Vada, Columbia was boasting of his immunity from Baba's demands of Dakshina. At once, Baba sent word to him and demanded two rupees as Dakshina from him and received it. Another devotee who had come to Shirdi deposited his balance of 18 rupees with Columbia in secret so that he might truthfully tell Baba that he had no money if he should ask for Dakshina. Baba turned to him and asked it for 2 rupees as Dakshina and added, Take it from this man that is Columbia and give it. The man's device was obviously found out by Baba. The man then readily paid it. W.G. Pradhan of Bombay lost his 7-year-old son and was much upset. He later heard of Sai Baba and visited him. Baba angrily said of him to the other devotees, Why does this fool go on lamenting the death of his son? It is merely going to the earth. The body must go to the earth. Why go on lamenting that? Then he began to describe in detail Pradhan's house and garden and stated even the number of Sita Pal and Rama Pal trees in it. M. B. Rege was a beloved devotee of Baba. Once he decided to visit Shirdi for Sri Ramanami festival. While searching for proper gift to Baba in shop, he saw a beautiful muslin, uh, muslin piece. Wondered how beautiful Baba would look when clad in it, purchased it and reached Shirdi. It was customary for Baba to receive such gifts from devotees and return the same to them. When Baba was busy receiving and returning gifts to devotees, Rege stealthily, uh, stealthily put his muslin cloth beneath Baba's seat unnoticed by anyone. At the end, cloth uh, at the end of it all, Baba stood up saying, Clear of all that lies on the gadi seat and dust it. The mattress was removed. Baba picked up the muslin, hugged it, saying, How fine is this muslin? I shall not return this. This is mine. He then put it on and looking at Rege said, Do I not look beautiful in this? In 1914, Gigi Narke was once watching Baba as he distributed Kafnis, the long gowns which Fakirs wear to a number of devotees and wished that Baba should give him one. Baba stopped the distribution, turned to Narke and said, Do not blame me for not giving you a Kafni. That Fakir has not, God has not permitted me 
to give you one. Similarly, in 1916, Narke arrived at Shirdi and learned that Baba was sending one Baman Rao to beg food on his behalf and wishes that he should be given that service. However, Narke later gave up the thought and visited Sai in his full suit. Baba said that from that day onwards, Narke should beg on his behalf. This service was allowed to Narke for four months. S. B. Dhumal was once the beloved devotees of Baba. One day Baba said to him, Bhau, the whole of last night I had no sleep. Baba, why so? asked Dhumal. I was thinking and thinking of you all the night. Baba said. Dhumal was overwhelmed and shed tears of joy. Baba was thereby assuring him that he was conscious of the constant remembrance of him, Baba, that Dhumal was practicing. Once this devotee persuaded Radha Krishna Mai to part with her uh, colored portrait of Baba and was passing before the mask, wishing to get it consecrated by Baba's touch later. Baba at once called Dhumal into the mask and asked him what he was carrying. Then he took the picture in his hand, gazed at it steadily, steadily but at its front and rear, and then returned it, saying, Keep it. Dhumal's wish was thus at once granted. In 1915, Nachni of Thana was leaving for Shirdi. At the railway station, one V.S. Samant gave him coconut and two anas with which to buy candy as his offering to Baba. When Nachni reached Shirdi, he gave the coconut to Baba and forgot all about the two anas. Baba wanted to see if he would recollect it. At least, when Nachni asked Baba's permission to return home, Baba said, but why keep back a poor Brahmin's two anas? When Nachne uh, gave him the two anas and asked for his pardon, Baba said, Whatever you undertake to do, do thoroughly, else do not undertake it. Kandhairav Garde was a disciple of Sri Ramananda Bidgar Maharaj, who was a saint of great parts and a disciple of Sri Akulkot Maharaj. His guru told him that the Garde should visit a number of saints who would even at the very sight of him, recognize him as one of their own stock. One of these saints I mentioned was Sri Sai Baba. Meetkar Maharaj told him that Sai would greet him as Ramadas. Accordingly, he visited Shirdi in 1912 or so. On seeing God Day, Sai Baba welcomed him, saying, Welcome, Ramadas. Obviously, the reference to God Day meant a disciple of Ramanand. One V.S. Joshi had sent 10 rupees to Baba as Dakshina through a friend who was going to Shirdi and requested him to take a photograph of Baba. The friend on reaching Shirdi gave Baba the Dakshina but had not the courage to take the photograph. After a few minutes, Baba suddenly told the gentleman to take his photograph. The latter took two snaps of Baba, one in the sitting posture and other in the surrounding posture. Baba's knowledge of the future, which is an aspect of his omniscience, is illustrated by the following Leelas. December 1910, one day Nana Chandorkar persuaded their friend Sahasra Buddhe to go for a darshan of Baba. On the way, a gentleman met him at Kopargaon and said of Baba, I know that mad fakir well. Sahasra Buddhe was in doubt whether the remark was indeed true. When he reached Shirdi and bowed to Baba, the latter said, You must bow down to Nulkar and to Bapu Sahib Jog that does not lower us in any wise. When he did accordingly, Baba told him to serve Nulkar wholeheartedly. He went on repeating the same words. Sahasra Buddha then requested Nulkar to tell him what service he could render him. Nulkar was embarrassed and said, Whatever Baba might have told you, please do not tease me like this, replied Sahasra Buddha. But tell me whether you have some hidden bars. Nulkar denied any such. Then Sahasra Buddha asked Baba repeatedly what he meant in ordering him to serve Nulkar. At last Baba said, Experience is not for bullocks like you. Only he who knows can receive it. Sahasra Buddha concluded that there is some hidden truth in Baba's words and decided not to leave Sharadeh before knowing it. All right, said Baba, answering his unspoken thought. Later Shama asked Baba, when will you give leave to Sahasra Buddha to go home? Baba brusquely replied, I have things to work out with him. Let him stay on here like a dog. On another occasion, Baba said to or said of Nurkar, He is my fellow. He has none beside me as his own. These words came true shortly after. Nunkar fell ill and he decided not to leave Shirdi till he got well. After one year, he passed away in March. Sahasra Buddha had to serve Nukar in his last days. How prophetic were Baba's words. 
One day a thought arose in Sahasra Buddha's mind while the scriptures proclaim that a guru makes his disciple like himself where he does not Baba make me like him. This thought recurred to him again and again for three days. Finally, Baba said to Shama, pointing at Sahasra Buddha, This fellow wants to drive me out of my seat and occupy it himself. But it needs a lot of patience. No one except Sahasra Buddha knew that Baba was responding to an unuttered thought. In December 1910, a little before his death, Nulkar said to Sahasra Buddha, Sai did not want me to suffer in my last days, so he has brought you here. So he has brought you here to serve me. Sometime before his demise, Nulkar wanted to go home. Baba at first gave him leave but soon called him back and said, Cremate that fellow in Lendi Bagh and go. No one understood whom he meant. Even Mahalsapati could only say that a calamity was impending for Nulkar. Indeed, as per Nulkar's last wish, he was cremated in Lendi Bagh. When Baba spoke the words, by him he meant Nulkar's physical body. For, in truth, man is a deathless spirit and only the body is mortal and needs to be cremated. It was also assurance that he, that is Nulkar, the spirit who shuffle, away, uh, sh- who shuffle off his body in complete awareness before leaving for his real spiritual home. In fact, Nulkar passed away in full awareness with his mind concentrated on Baba and after Sahasra Buddha had poured the whole, uh, holy washing of Baba's feet in his mouth. One day, in the presence of Imam Bhai Chote Khan, Sai Baba spoke cryptically to an elderly lady called Mavusi about a thorn pricking in the foot and losing off one of the one of the parents. No one could understand to whom Baba referred. The devotee was in hurry to return home. And at last, he went away even without Baba's permission. He writes, Two days after my return home, my mother stuck a thorn in her foot while collecting fuel and she died 8 or 10 days later as her leg had swollen. Then I understood what Baba said to the lady about thorn and losing one of his parents. On the fourth day of her death, I came to Shirdi as I had no funds and employments and was hoping that Baba would relieve my financial distress. I stayed on for 34 days or so and Baba said to Mabusi in my presence, Udi must be received and then leave for departure must be taken. I at once inferred that Baba meant those words for me. Baba's usual method is to address words to someone when they are met for another or to address them into a whole group when only one of them is concerned. Next morning, Baba extended his hand with Udi when I approached him and thus confirmed my infer- inference. At that time of giving Udi, Baba said, At the doorway of the house, that is my house, there will be an old woman standing. She will give you something using which celebrations may be performed. Guests have come. The feast should be had in their company. I could not make out Baba's meaning then. On going home, the window of the Kazi, a very old lady, was standing at my door. And out of love or friendship for me, put 50 rupees in my hand and said, perform your ceremonies. That was the 14th day of my mother's death when the ceremonies had to be performed. And for that, my four sisters and their husbands had come home in my absence. These evidently were the guests mentioned by the Baba. I celebrated the 40th day with the money. On going home, the widow of the Kazi, a very old lady, was standing at my door and out of love or friendship for me, put 50 rupees in my hand and said, perform your ceremonies. That was the 40th day of my mother's death where the ceremonies had to be performed and for that, my four sisters and their husbands have come home in my absence. These evidently were the guests mentioned by Baba. I celebrated the 40th day with the money given to me by the old lady. On my next visit to Shirdi, a month or so later, Baba said to me, Gulab, a rose has come to your house. I went back and found that my wife had recently delivered a male child, believing that to be the Gulab, Rose rose mentioned by Baba, the boy was named Gulab. 
One day, lizard on the wall of the mask ticked. Abbas, a devotee, asked Sai what the omen was. The master said, "The creature was happy that her sister that that her sister was coming from Aurangabad." The devotee was puzzled. After some time, a man came from Aurangabad on on horseback. One day, a lizard on the wall of the mask ticked. A devotee asked Sai what the omen was. The master said that the creature was happy that her sister was coming from Aurangabad. The devotee was puzzled. After some time, a man came from Aurangabad on horseback. He took out a bag to fetch pulses for the horse and shook off the dust on it. A lizard fell out of it and climbed up the wall. The two creatures met and played together. When Nana Sahib Bere and his friends sought Sahib's permission to return, he said, "Start at once and proceed fast." They started in two tongas. Bere hurried the driver to proceed faster. His friends followed slowly in the tonga as they thought that there was plenty of time. Their tonga was attacked by the highwaymen, whereas Bere escaped. One has this to simply implicitly obey the guru's order, both in spiritual and the worldly matters. Baba's omniscience includes his accurate knowledge of the entire past of his devotees, extending to their previous lives. The skeptical ones might suppose that Baba's reference to past lives of his devotees might be part of a mystification and an awe-inspiring stunt of wicked fakir. But such a view only reveals a deep-rooted blindness on our part regarding the other aspects of Sai Baba's greatness and especially of his virtues like humility. Then we need to remember that, after all, modern scientific research too in the field of parapsychology, like that of Professor Ian Stevenson, tends to confirm the truth of this phenomenon. And such classics on practical yoga as Patanjali's yoga aphorisms contain specific spiritual practices by which one could acquire such occult powers. What a source of immense gratitude would be to a devotee who realizes that Baba had been watching him. by his omniscient gaze all through his past long before he even heard of such a one like sai baba this would assure his devotees that in baba they have a competent one to judge the higher justice that underlies the seeming caprices of fortune they may undergo in their lives and thus it would enable them to reset the content when he chooses to allow his devotees to undergo certain of their hardships while relieving them of some other This kind of omniscience reveals that the possessor of it intimately knows the will of God both far ahead of its actual manifestation and long after it too. There can be no greater safety to a devotee than to resort to such a such a one. Now we shall notice a few such instances. Balwant Nath ne visited Shirdi somewhere around uh, somewhere about 1915. One night at about 8 p.m. he went to Dwaraka Mai and asked Sai Baba. What japa shall I make? Baba said, "Go to Devpur, a village twenty miles from Kopargaon, from Kopargaon, and worship the stones there which your ancestors worshipped." On his return, he asked his father about it. His father told him that their ancestors worshipped some images at Devpur for several generations. Further, Nashni's ancestor by five degrees, Baba Prayag, had no children till he was sixty, and he resorted to a saint. Baba Bhagwat a disciple of Sai Eknath Maharaj at Trayambak he was blessed with a son within one year the saint baba bhagwat took the child hardly one year old to devpur and gave it in a hand written copy of the gnaneshwari ever since it became a tradition of every descendant of the family to go to devpur and take initiation from a member of that guru's lineage all this was at heart of baba's crisp reply to nachne's question Nashni did not follow Baba's instruction till 1927. That is, five years after Baba's Mahasamadhi. In 1927, Nashni happened to greet, happened to see a great saint by name Nano Maharaj. The saint was hardly 15 years old. On seeing Nano Maharaj, um, he uh, on seeing Nashni, he asked him, "Have you gone to Devpur?" Surprised at the pinpointed accuracy of the question, he had to admit that he hadn't done so, and he also explained the reasons for it. Nano Maharaj replied, "What if there is no one older than you in the lineage of your ancestral guru?" My own guru uh, is younger than I. His name is Doi Pode. The name of your guru is Bhagwat. 
Najne wondered how young the Guru of Nano Maharaj could be. The latter promised to show him his Guru. Soon after, Najne went to Devpur and got initiated by young Bhagavat. A year after that, he came to know that Nano Maharaj was to visit Bombay and went there. Nano Maharaj showed him his 8-year-old Guru, Shri Pada Doi Pode. This instant reveals that Sai Baba's knowledge of Najne's past extended to several generations and the direction is born out of the words. out by the words of the great saint another great saint nano maharaj in the seventh chapter we mentioned about two visitors from goa to one of whom baba demonstrated that he was lord datta we shall mention what he said to the other baba spoke regarding the second visitor from goa in his characteristic bail language identifying himself with the latter he said that a brahmin who was his trusted cook for 35 years fell into a bad company and he will waste Once he removed a stone in the wall and stole away currency notes worth thirty thousand rupees, he was almost obsessed with the loss. When a fakir going along the road came to him and inquired after the cause of his sadness, on knowing the truth, the fakir advised him to owe to a great saint at Shirdi by name Sai Baba that he would visit Shirdi and worship Sai if and when he got back his money. The fakir also advised him to know not to eat one of his favorite dishes at meal till su- till such time and the man followed the fakir's directions and to his great surprise the brahmin cook came back to him and returning the money with great penitence begged his pardon the visitor promptly started on his promised trip to shirdi but the captain of the ship said that there was no accommodation in the vessel soon a pune a perfect stranger came there and interceded for him with the captain at last the captain took the man in the vessel and the latter eventually arrived at shirdi the only thing he would was that he would take darshan of sai baba if he got back his lost sum and he did so he was not indebted any more to the lord then how and why should sai baba accept his dakshina now we shall turn to sai baba's knowledge of the past lives of the persons and even of animals when professor g g narke first visited sai baba the latter said to shama who was about to introduce the visitor you introduce him to me i have known him for 30 lives similarly when raghuveer purandare visited baba in 1909 the latter said to purandare that they were connected for seven centuries he added i will not forget him i will always remember him even if he is away even more than 2000 miles i will not eat even a bit without him m w pradhan had a son by name babu sai baba was particularly fond of him nearly a year before babu's birth sai baba pointed out mrs pradhan to shama and said she is the mother of uh, she is the mother of my babu sai baba once told his devotees about babu's past life thus a pious old man lived at shirdi for 12 years his wife and his grown up sons who were at jalna repeatedly requested him to return to them At last he went on horseback and I that is Sai Baba followed him in a cart after a time this old man married a young girl the daughter of his own sister and had a son by her the boy was later poisoned by biradars and was born as babu and babu after his death is now born again in bombay in a similar vein sai baba once told bala sai bhate that the latter was a khatri in his past life and that his wife and son of the present life were of a weaver's caste in their past life he said that his devotee vasudev kaka was in his past life a rajput named jay singh who had a daughter of loose morals that the latter became a mistress of a barber he said on another occasion that his devotee shrimati chandra bhai borkar was his sister in her past seven births B. H. Thakur, a clerk in the revenue department, once went to Vada Gaon on official duty and there he took darshan of a famous Kanarese saint named Appa. When Thakur bowed to him, the saint blessed him and said, When you go to the north on your official tours, you will meet a very great saint who will show you the path to the peace. He also told Thakur to study the mystical work, Vichara Sagara. Later, Thakur was transferred to Jinnar. To reach that place, he had to cross a very steep ghat called Nani Ghat on the back of a buffalo. The ride pained his body much. Later, he was posted further north at Kalyan, where he came he, where he came into contact with Nana Sahib Chandurkar and heard of Sai Baba's greatness from him. 
He earned to take Baba's darshan. When Thakur later saw Sai Baba, he was overjoyed and his eyes were brimmed with tears. Looking at him, Baba said, The path shown in the place, in this place, is not as easy as the teachings of Appa, the Kanarese saint, or even as the buffalo ride across the Nani Ghat. In this spiritual path, you have to exert your utmost efforts. Thakur at once realized that he was the very great saint that Appa told him of and bowed to Baba. Baba blessed him and said, What Appa told you was all right, but these things have to be practiced and lived. Mere reading won't do. Mere study without practice and the grace of the Guru is of no use. Anwar Khan Khazi of Ahmadnagar wanted to rebuild a masjid at Telikakut, Kajiji Masjid. He came to Baba for funds to repair the masjid. Baba told him after he had waited long that the Masid would not accept any money from him or others but would herself provide the funds. Dig three feet under the nimbar, that is Nietzsche, and uh, you will find a treasure. Rebuild the Masid, that Baba said. Then the Kaji went to Ahmadnagar, found the treasure, rebuilt it and came to Shirdi and told me and others about the facts. Of about the facts. Sai once said, one morning I strolled along, had a bath in Tivillet. As I prepared the chilling pipe, a traveller turned up and sat by me. We heard a croaking. I told him that a frog was caught by a snake and was crying. I went and addressed the creatures, O Veera Badrappa and Channa Basappa, fire upon your enmity and even after taking such a low birth, give it up and rest in peace. The snake at once left the frog and the two creatures escaped. I then explained, devotees raised money for the renovation of a dilap- dilapidated temple. Twice a rich man swindled the funds. Once God appeared in his wife's dream and said, Renovate the temple. I will reward you hundredfold. Her husband cleverly put her off. After some days of the Lord again appeared in her dream and she offered her jewels for the purpose. The greedy husband undervalued them and in exchange gave a piece of barren land to the temple priest towards the expenses of daily worship. Originally it was mortgaged to him by a poor woman for 200 rupees, which... She could not ready. In the next life, the miser was born as a Brahmin named Virabhadrappa. His devout wife was reborn as Gauri, the daughter of the temple priest. The poor woman who mortgaged the land was born as Chanabasappa. The priest was devoted to me. I told him the bridegroom would himself come seeking his daughter in marriage. One day, the poor boy Virabhadrappa came to his house and on my advice, Gauri was married to him. Even in that life, he hankered after money. By a sudden twist of circumstances, the barren land was sold at a lakh rupees. There was a quarrel for the money. When they came to me, I said that the money is God's and was to be entrusted to the priest and that Gauri was the heiress to it and her husband had no right over it. Veerapadrappa was wild and imputed evil motives to me. That night, the Lord appeared in uh, Gauri's dream and told her to spend a portion of the money for renovating the temple and to consult me, that is Baba, with regard to it. Chennapadrappa and Veerapadrappa quarreled for the money. The latter threatened the former with death. Chennapadrappa sought my protection and I assured him of it. Owing to the hatred, Veerapadrappa is born as snake and the timid Chennapadrappa is born as a frog. Frog, true to my pledge, I have rescued the latter now. Sai stands by his word to the very end of time. Jai Sai Master.